Good morning everybody and once again welcome back to the video. In this video we are going to learn about automating alerting and reporting for AWS glue job resource usage. That is correct, a, uh, resource usage. So we are going to explore the solution proposed by these authors followed by a small hands-on lab. So let's get started. Special thanks to the author Michael and Angus. Uh, thank you so much guys for publishing this article and with the source code. So now let's take a look at the solution. So now let's explore the architecture followed by a hands-on lab. So sharing my screen. In your AWS account, you might have 10, 20, 100, 1000 of glue jobs or 1000 of spark jobs are running, right? So uh, this architecture is essentially an event-driven architecture, meaning anytime a glue job starts, anytime the glue jobs fail, all these events are being broadcasted to an event bus. We can essentially write rule and subscribe to these events, right? So uh, block number two is, you know, all these events are broadcasted to the event bus. We are gonna write a rule to match certain events and a Lambda function will be fired. This Lambda function will store the metadata in DynamoDB. Again, the metadata could be uh, when the job started, how much resource it was using, how long it was running, etc., etc. Right? And it also broadcast an SNS based on uh, certain condition if you exceeded the threshold. Right? After that, you have a Lambda function which could run on a cron job, a weekly, daily, monthly, whatever you uh, prefer. And then this Lambda is gonna pull the uh, data from DynamoDB, crunch those numbers, and send you an email using AWS simple email service. So let me quickly show you. So again, if a glue job exceeded a threshold, you will receive an email uh, something similar to this. As you can see, here you can see provision worker five, worker threshold 10, provision job time on, etc. So here you can see the email says, uh, you know, uh, the glue job uh, MDA data simulator uh, for job run ID XYZ completed successfully, but exceeded the threshold uh, please refer to the below to adjust it accordingly. So again, uh, here you can see it, it does show you all that. And then here is how a weekly report looks like. So here you can see the job name, uh, how long that job was running, uh, did it retry, average workers, and the uh, estimated cost. This solution is fantastic for companies and organization who have heavily invested in AWS Glue and need uh, a more insights uh, into their uh, workload. For example, how long the job were running, how many res what, how much resource they have consumed, etc. So now let's uh, do a, a hands-on lab. So the first step in the project is we need to clone the repository given by the author. I will be doing that by git clone followed by this particular URL. Now the repository has been cloned. The next step, we need to install the SAM CLI. I can do that by using pip install aws hyphen sam hyphen cli and sam cli has now been installed now what do we need to do is we need to deploy the solution so now cd into the directory so cd aws glue job tracker ls here you can see all the files inside that you can review the lambda functions code uh, later if needed now let's deploy the solution we can do that by using the following command so we're gonna say sam deploy hyphen hyphen guided. Now this should deploy the entire stack. It's gonna ask you a couple of prompt. So here it's asking me the stack name. I'm gonna say demo glue tracker. Uh, region would be US is one. Uh, the worker threshold could be 10. Then the parameter uh, uh, job duration threshold. So we can leave it to default 480. That's completely all right. Uh, job notification email address. Uh, I'm going to put a fake email here. Otherwise, you guys are going to keep sending me email addresses. Right. So I'm going to use xyz at gmail.com. Then uh, confirm your changes. So I'm going to say yes. Allow Sam CLI uh, to create IAM role creation. We're going to say yes. Uh, disable rollback. We're going to say yes and save arguments configuration file, we're gonna say yes. Then SAM configuration file, we're just gonna leave that to default, just click enter, and now the stack is gonna be deployed. So now let's wait for the stack to be deployed. And it's asking me a small prompt, so I'm just gonna say yes here, and uh, this should deploy all my resources uh, to the AWS. So let's wait for all these resources to be deployed. My stack has now been deployed.
So the stack must have deployed a DynamoDB table, two Lambda functions, and you must be seeing an event bridge rule. Uh, you can actually verify that. I'm gonna quickly show you. As you can see, I do see a DynamoDB table. I don't have any data yet, okay? Again, these two Lambda functions, and then I see, uh, as you can see, an event bridge uh, rule. Again, this event bridge rule is fired based on uh, certain criteria. For example, this is the reporting one, right? So if I go back and if I see probably this one, here you can see anytime a glue job succeed or failed or timed out or stopped, this uh, Lambda function will be fired. And again, uh, uh, you know, it's gonna put all the metadata into DynamoDB and later on a Lambda will be fired at a cron and it's gonna pull the report. So now let's run some uh, sample glue job and see if we can see all these metadata in DynamoDB. So I'll be running a sample glue job just to test a solution. I have, uh, again, a glue job called date dimension. This creates a date dimension, uh, how do you like? So I'm just gonna run this job. As you can see, now the job is in the starting state. Uh, hopefully you guys can see. Here you can see it's in the running state. Once the job is complete, what I do anticipate is to see all these metadata in DynamoDB. So let me wait or pause the video and once the job is complete, let's see if we do see the metadata in DynamoDB. So as you can see, the glue job has now been succeeded. As you can see, it took about 2 minutes and 11 seconds. Now, what I anticipate is it must have uh, uh, sent an event to the event uh, uh, bus and um, based on the rule, a lambda must have been fired and I should expect uh, a, a record in the DynamoDB table, right? So if I head over back to my Lambda function, again, this is the Lambda which will be fired on an event. So if I head over to the CloudWatch, here you can see, I do see an event just to show you a little better. I put the event in the JSON formatter, as you can see, right? So the job has been succeeded, right? This is the job name, which is what I said, right? The, the date dimension. So if we now go to DynamoDB and here you can see, we do see a record. Uh, this is the the glue job ID, the DPU hours, uh, the exec class. So if I can, I can just basically click here and show you on the JSON formatter. Again, here you can see all the metadata. Now, later on, uh, uh, on a weekly basis, a cron is going to pull all this uh, data and it's going to crunch the numbers and send you a report. Thank you so much for watching. Uh, thank you so much for watching the video and special thanks to the author for publishing this fantastic uh, article on AWS blog post. Uh, with that being said, if you have any further questions, do let me know and all the resources, including the code uh, where the author has posted, you know, the, the GitHub links and the AWS blog post, every single thing is in the description section below so you can learn, uh, read uh, during your free time. Thank you so much for watching and I'm going to see you in the next video.